it was this secret inside me. So that's when I decided to change the narrative and tell a new story. Whatever stereotype you're gonna try to put on me isn't gonna fit, that's for sure. Because there's no stopping me. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you and visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Welcome to Plus Talk on Plus Life, where we're all about turning positive into a plus. And my guest today has been doing that on the small screen and more recently on stage. Joining me today, Nathaniel Hall from Manchester. Hey, Nathaniel. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing quite well. Thank you very much for asking. Appreciate that. Um, we know you over here in the States um, from It's a Sin, which congratulations, I know is now available on Netflix, which is super cool. It it is, yeah. I'm not sure if it's on Netflix USA yet, but hopefully very soon, because that means also you get to see it and I get royalties. Ah, so. <laughs> well, that's, we like that. If, if it's not on Netflix here, it's definitely on HBO Max. That's where I saw yeah. it and really enjoyed it. And we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but let's talk about you, because like me, you're somebody who's in the media and you're in the public eye, and you're also living with HIV and quite proudly living with HIV. When did you decide that you were ready to be open and public and honest, not just sort of within friends and family, but essentially the world? And what drove you to do it? Um, well, yeah, I mean, this this version of me is very different to a version of me back in sort of about 2017. Um, and that was the real turning point for me. I'd lived with HIV for about 15 years at that point, diagnosed at 16 from my first sexual experience. But I kept it secret for a very, very long time. Not uncommon, as we know. And um, and, and slowly over time, that, the, 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 that self-stigma and that shame kind of ate away at me. And in 2017, I found myself looking in the mirror, catching myself in the mirror two days after a house party, not recognizing who I was, you know, um, drugs, alcohol, sex, which are, they're all fun things if you're pursuing them for fun, but not if they're masking pain. And I realized at that point, that's what had happened. And, you know, loads of other things, my career had stagnated. I was in a very, very toxic codependent relationship and something had to give. And it was, I knew what it was. It was this secret inside me. So that's when I decided to change the narrative and tell a new story. Um, and I decided decided to do that very publicly, in, as you do, <laughs> um, on stage in a show called First Time, uh, which premiered in 2018. So let's talk about this stigma smashing solo show of yours, First Time. Um, you've just finished touring the UK with it. Um, give us a bit of sort of, you know, what it's about. Is it is it your story? Is it a version of you? People ask me, is everything in the show true? And actually, almost everything is true. I mean, obviously, it's a dramatization, you know, like I've changed a few little bits, but it, it's, it's all really, it's kind of... Um, uh, like warts and all true. Um, you meet me at the start of this show um, in a state of panic. I've not been to bed. I'm not ready to do the show. And it ends in a really hopeful place, um, which is kind of where I wanted it to, because that's that's the trajectory that I was on. So, so, yeah. so when, when you decide, OK, I'm going to come out about my HIV status, I'm going to do it in a play. How do you go about getting that produced and getting that on stage? What's the process? And, and did you sort of have people hesitant to do it because people still don't like to talk about HIV. Well, <laughs> blood, sweat and tears is the way you do it. If anyone works in the arts industry, you'll know that. Um, I told, I, I run a, a theatre company, which was in its infancy back then, but um, my friend Chris Hoyle, who's a co-artist director with me, um, he knew my story and I just said to him one night, as all good ideas happen, and I just said, I want to tell my story, I'm ready. And he was just like, I want to do it with you. And it was amazing to have him all the way through as a friend and you know and as a as a colleague to support me through that we we started doing some i started doing some writing i was doing scratch nights you know i've got a drag alter ego called sue from sexual health um who kind of i was workshopping at scratch nights and and, and on stand-up nights and then and then you know once i felt ready i saw an, i saw an opportunity for some money um, at a theatre in South Manchester, and um, I, I applied, and, and they they loved the idea. It premiered in 2018. It went really well, um, but also a lot of people found out about it because my story hit the headlines, and we weren't quite expecting that. It was the run up to World AIDS Day, and 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 BuzzFeed News did an incredible article, and then that kind of snowballed and then there was BBC News and then I was on the breakfast couch, you know, and kind of daytime TV and all this stuff. So there was all these cameras in, uh, around the theatre and around that moment as well, which was quite, kind of a lot to deal with. Yeah, well, but great PR. And I think something like over 70,000 people have now seen the piece. Um, 
just talking about that, about suddenly you're in the spotlight and you're on the couch at, you know, uh, at Good Morning Britain and all of the BBC breakfast and things like that. And no doubt people are asking you, you know, or telling you how courageous you are for sharing your story. As a man living with HIV, do you ever think it sucks that I have to be called, you know, sort of having courage in this day and age for talking about this? Yeah, I, I do. And I, I always say, like, I still feel like a kid from Stockport. Like, you know, I still feel like the kid that was 16, you know, and, and you know, we, that thing happened to me. It's just a thing that happened. It's not like a, a remarkable story. Uh, and I do, yeah, you, you sort of, if you, particularly if you talk about your story publicly, you're, you're on a pedestal and, you know, you are a role model to people. And, and that's that's a real honour and a privilege, particularly for other people who live with HIV. And I have had lots of people message me, um, you know, thousands of people actually over the last few years. Um, and that's really humbling. Even if they haven't seen my show, they've read my story or seen it on the telly. And it's inspired them in some way to, you know, move towards being open. Because, I mean, it, for me now living openly i can't believe i live for so long not um you know the the uh, the the things the damage that did to me psychologically not being open and and not fighting through that stigma and shame um you know is crazy and i i just want a world where everyone <laughs> with hiv is comfortable to do that you yeah. know and so and where it's not when people don't turn around and say it's courageous because it's just really normal to know someone living with HIV in yeah, your life. Yeah, and, and I totally relate when you know the the, the number it does on us, um, stigma in general, but the internalized stigma that I didn't even realize I had until yep. I spoke publicly about it. Like I used to make jokes, oh, and I thought I was joking, like, oh, you don't want to date me, I'm damaged goods. And I would say it like that, like, ah. Oh, and I didn't realize that every time I said that, there was a little bit in the back of my head that actually filed it away as I believed it. And, and so it is, it's a very sort of cathartic experience. And, and speaking of that, the writing and the, I'm, I'm assuming that the writing and putting this together has got to be quite cathartic. So that the time comes when you stand on that stage to give the first performance. Are you really, have you, where are you at with your comfort level? Were you still absolutely shit scared? Or had you sort of, had you sort of, you know, embraced what was going to happen because you'd been creating? Uh, no, the, the, the former, definitely. Absolutely shit scared. Um, because, because there was also, you know, everything else wrapped up in it. You know, it's a story that you're putting out there, but also, you know, I'm a, I, it was my writing, it's my performing, you know, it's all your creativity and your uh, and your your talent you're putting out. And it's a double whammy if someone says and turns around and says they don't like it because it, that feels like a personal attack when it's your own story. So all that fear was was very much there. I mean, there wasn't there wasn't so much a fear of a any sort of backlash or anything like that, but it was more around maybe more around like people like going like we've heard that story or that story's not interesting or like you know um uh, it was too egocentric and you know all those doubts that you get as an artist sort of all creep in but i was terrified when i first did it. i don't know how i got through that first performance honestly i do not know um but each time it got easier and then you know the show was redeveloped into a touring piece and uh, and 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 actually, because I've I've been fortunate enough to perform it over a long period of time repeatedly, it's enabled me to actually delve a bit deeper because there was things that I was avoiding going places I was avoiding going to in the original show, um, and actually as the uh, as it moved on and I got more comfortable with my own story and my own past and it was processed, I could really push down into the right into the root of it and with that performance particularly and, and go to a place that I couldn't previously, which is which is really good. Yeah, and look, uh, the success has been fantastic, and, and not just for yourself, but really when you think about, as you've said, the the what it means to other people who are living with HIV. And as I often say, I refer to it as sort of standing in the shadows of life rather than out in the sunshine, um, and mm. are terrified to step into the sunshine. And all of this, of course, leads to um, it's a sin, which which has done phenomenal. I, you know, I'm trying to think like eleven. BAFTA nominations. Yeah. Um, when that project comes along, how do you feel? What's the reaction to it for you? Well, I, I remember it was it was Russell T. Davis, who's the writer. Was he he lives part time in Manchester, where I'm from. So 
I, I heard on the grapevine that he was writing this show and it was around the time I was doing my show in 2018 and I said to my agent I was like this is literally this is the perfect <laughs> the perfect match I was like I have to be seen for this but prior to to me making my show first time my acting career had really stalled because I suffer from generalized anxiety disorder and PTSD and I'd not realized that I just thought I'd become I wasn't a very good actor because I just couldn't do auditions you know and all these things and actually I now realize that it was all this other stuff going on for me. And there was even self-sabotage there and a, and a lack of belief. But it, at, at that moment, I just said, Russell needs to come and see this show. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't, but I, I I messaged him on Instagram, which is really unprofessional. And I, I don't <laughs> recommend it to, to budding actors, but I just thought, I'm just going to try it. And I did. And he, he messaged me straight back. He was like, I've heard about your show. Loads of people have told me, let's go for a coffee. So I just sat in a coffee shop and he's like one of my absolute screenwriting legends you know he was the creator of queer as folk which has had its uh, an amazing spin-off in the us as well and i just sat there opposite and he was like he basically had a one-person show i want like i did it for him in, in a coffee shop told him my story and then he said he said well you know you're too young for the main character too old for the main characters but there may be a, a role in there for you with a bit of a glint in his eye and walked off and then, um, yeah, and the rest is history. You know, I got invited to audition. The producer came to see my show. And I, it was, it, for me, it was amazing. And I think I've spoken to a lot of other people living with HIV who, who said that actually without an actor living with HIV in the show, they may not have watched it or they yeah. may have switched off. Because for them, and I understand that there's a real uh, a discomfort in our stories being capitalised on or whatever. Um, so I think it was really important that the show had that. And... Um, yeah yeah amazing and, just what an amazing experience all right that's going to do it for this episode of plus talk if you want to just watch this again or find out more about nathaniel check out the website pluslifemedia.com and remember to follow us across social media platforms we are at plus life media until next time stay safe wash your hands be friendly to one another we'll see you soon